Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Have you ever wondered why for some sessions the wind is amazing, while for others the wind isn't quite right? While the wind speed may appear to be the same, there can be a noticeable difference when it comes to the power of your kite. We were curious, what are the factors that affect the power of your kite? We did some digging and these are the five things that we found. First up is the amount of air hitting the kite, or the volume. It should come as a no-brainer that the bigger the kite, the more power you have. But that's not all. The design of the kite, specifically the lift to drag ratio, will dictate how efficiently the kite will harness the wind energy. The kite with high lift to drag ratio will harness more power from the wind, but the downside would be less user friendliness. The kite with the lower lift to drag ratio will harness less energy from the wind, but the benefit would be increased user friendliness. The second thing is also pretty obvious, and that's the wind speed. The higher the wind speed, the higher the kinetic energy. Wind speed is quadratic, meaning that each time the wind speed doubles, the kinetic energy quadruples. A classic example is 20 knots, which has four times the energy of 10 knots of wind. The third thing is air density. Air density affects the total power that your kite will have. There are several things that influence air density, such as elevation, temperature, and humidity. Let's explore these one by one. Elevation. The higher you are, the less dense the wind. Generally speaking, for each kilometer above ground, the air density decreases by about 10%. For example, at elevation of one kilometer, the air would be about 10% less dense than at sea level. At two kilometers, 20%. At three kilometers, 30%, and so on. If you're gonna kite at Lake Tahoe, which is about two kilometers above sea level, you may wanna use a larger kite for this reason. Of course, it's not really elevation that makes the air less dense, but the decreased air pressure that comes with it. This brings us to another point to consider. Air pressure can change due to weather. Air pressure can fluctuate as much as 5% between extremes. Now let's talk about temperature. As the temperature decreases, the air density goes up, meaning more power in your kite. If you look at extreme examples, air at minus 20 degrees Celsius is about 20% denser than air at plus 30 degrees Celsius. 10 knots of wind in Florida is therefore not the same as 10 knots of wind up north in Canada in February. Temperature is the main reason why a lot of Canadians call Caribbean winds fluffy, as they just don't deliver the same punch as those cold Canadian winds. Another reason for fluffy Caribbean winds is humidity. As humidity increases, the air density decreases. The difference between dry air and humid air is that water vapor displaces oxygen and nitrogen in the air. And because water vapor is lighter than oxygen and nitrogen, the air becomes less dense and hence less powerful. Air with 0% humidity will be about 5% denser than air that's 100% humid. This is an extreme example, of course. In real life, humidity is always somewhere in the middle, meaning real life effects are about 1-3%. to The fourth thing that can affect your kite's power is the wind gradient. The closer the wind is to the ground, the more friction it encounters. At higher heights, there's less friction, so the wind speed accelerates. A perfect example is a smokestack, as you can see how the smoke becomes flatter the higher it goes, as it gets windier. Here in Ontario, we get gradient winds in late spring and early summer as the cold layer of air over cold water doesn't mix with the warm air above. The result is flat water with super smooth winds. The catch is you have to use longer lines to access those hidden winds, which arguably has its pros and cons. The fifth factor that affects the wind power produced by your kite is turbulence. If the wind is steady, the kite can efficiently convert wind power into motion, but if the flow is turbulent, the energy gets lost. You've probably encountered super steady winds and super punchy winds where it seems windy, but you're barely staying upwind. The best way to illustrate this point is to look at laminar flow in pipes. As you can see on this graphic, liquids are flowing in parallel layers without any mixing happening in between. In contrast, turbulent flow is rather chaotic as all the layers mix up in various ways as they travel downstream. Our understanding is that super steady thermal winds that we get late spring and early summer are laminar in nature, meaning that there are several layers of wind speeds one on top of the other and that there's no mixing in between. That's why we get elevator jumps. As you keep going up and up, you reach the next layer and the wind speed increases. In contrast, when the flow is turbulent, the wind tends to be punchier and gustier, and this remains the case at any height. From our experience, even at higher wind speeds, it's harder to consistently boost high compared to lower wind speeds with steadier flow. Is turbulence the same as gusts? We couldn't find an exact answer, but our understanding is that turbulent wind leads to gusts. Turbulent wind can be caused by either friction over land or due to the movement of air masses. If there are any meteorologists watching, please let us know in the comments below what you think about turbulent winds as it relates to kiting. Honestly, from our research, we couldn't get to the bottom of it, but we feel this is a big one as there's a clear difference in the two types of flows at our home spot. 
All right, guys, there you have it. Five things that affect the power of your kite. Of course, we can't forget about one other part of the equation, and that's your weight, as the power of your kite is somewhat dependent on how many beers you had last night. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.